Hi everyone, thank you for joining us. I am in the Firefish Crowdcast and it's joining the dots season. Can't believe we're at the end of May, so I hope you've had a successful May. Um, delighted to have Simon Bliss on with me as my guest. This is this is a, the tables are turned here. I get my own back because I'm normally a guest for you, Simon, on the Team Network. Yeah. Um, which I'm looking forward to this. So, if anybody has uh, not known or heard about the Team Network, it's the most fantastic sort of um, network of independent recruitment agencies that all get together and help one another and share. And the biggest sort of key thing is that you split fees. Um, so that's what we're going to go into. But first of all, I just want to sort of on a personal note, Simon, you know, I have to um, take my hat off to you because you were a very brave man. Um, you know, in the middle of all of this, October 2020, you decided, yep, you're selling your recruitment agency and you were going to take on a new business, you know, in the middle of sort of crisis, pandemonium, et cetera. Um, and, and you took on and took over the team network. So, you know, Talk to me about just why you took on the network and, and, and you're running that now and you decided that was the right time for you. I, I wanted to retire. <laughs> uh, my, my plan had been I, I entered recruitment like we all do in a strange, a strange journey at the tender age of 54, uh, having bought um, principal people, a health and safety recruiter. And, and actually, I stumbled around a year, having never been in recruitment before. Um, but... Uh, I, the idea was to get, get hold of a little business, scale it, exit, retire. That was always the plan. I had a five-year plan, and it took 10 years. I'm sure a few people can uh, ally with that. Um, but it, it, was, it was a bit of a challenge for the first a year or so. Um, but I joined team, and that helped me a lot. Um, uh, a, the people at head office, uh, the service providers, the, 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 the knowledge and uh, learning and development you get from team and the support you get from your colleagues and other members was, was a culture that uh, I, was, I really embraced. And I, it was strange to me because I used to come be in the logistics and logistics people did not speak to each other. You wouldn't get, um, you wouldn't get uh, DHL talking to Federal Express. You know, it would, so no one spoke to anyone in, in that industry. And I thought, oh, I wonder if all recruiters talk to each other. And uh, the more I got into recruitment and, and loved it, I should say, I realized that actually that, that, that actually didn't happen. Michael Page doesn't talk to Robert Walters when they got a problem. Um, but uh, I was going to retire. But um, uh, the, the, the guy that helped me sell my business sidled up to me and said, I think I've got an opportunity for you. And I said, and when he said it was team and with the, the original founder, Simon Garber, who I liked, respected, we started to have a conversation. And actually, COVID had thrown us all up in the air a little bit. And, and it was one of those things, and I, I remember sharing this idea with lots of other team members at the time. It makes you think about what you're doing with your business and your current processes and how you do stuff. And, um, and, and, and I thought, we, this is an opportunity for change. And I saw some things that I thought team could do. And I got more and more excited about the opportunity because I didn't really want to retire, if the truth be known. I'm no good at, I'm no good at golf or gardening. Uh, I think about the, the pace that you've tried to do lots of different things already in the team network. I've certainly seen that you're not one to retire yet either. So that's no. a good thing. <laughs> but, um, uh, I, yeah, so I... I I really thought there's an opportunity here. That, and this team it was always originally started as a regional business and we had regional meetings. But it's now it, it's now 65% uh, specialists. So we've got loads of specialist groups and we've expanded those. And actually going, uh, going online with all of our meetings has created so much connectivity. Yeah. So we've got people... We've got people um, who are members in London working with people in Scotland who they'd never spoken to before because they'd never met on regional meetings. We run lots of live, live webinars that you've been uh, a guest for, and, and that supported our members with L&D and, and thought leadership. So uh, we're doing lots of stuff to, yeah. to help and also share and show people that actually sharing sharing. Uh, ideas as well as jobs is, is a good thing to do. And you shouldn't be afraid to do that. And team puts its arms around people as members and protects them 
if they want to share stuff. Because if, if people pinch a member of staff or, or uh, do someone over on a job or a candidate, we, we sort of step in and, and gently wrap knuckles and... Uh, well, do you know what? Because I, I love that. It's, it's the police force we used to have when we were on the, the director uh, or the board together, Simon. So well, let's go into the, some of the practicalities and unpick some of those things okay. it, um, as well, because it's re- really valuable. So first of all, I want to pick up on that because I, like you, thought 10 years ago, I never talked to my competitors yeah. Um, because no, that that just was not the done thing. So I want to start there. This concept of talking to your competitors, like what what is the benefits of this, and what are the practicalities of the functional? How does this happen? How do you do this in a safe environment? Well, I I think you've got to put things in perspective. Um, firstly, team is made up of SME recruiters, really. I mean, we've had, we have Meridian, who are lovely, uh, 100 million pound turnover members, but they're, they're sort of outside of our avatar. Our average avatar is solo through to about 30, maybe 40 uh, desks in, uh, in the team, 40 people in the team. So we're small businesses. Um, we're 500 uh, companies now, um, and there's 30,000 plus recruitment companies in the country. So... <laughs> We can work together and not tread on each other's toes. It's the other guys we want to be. And, and the bigger boys that are undercutting us or cutting some corners where, where perhaps process, uh, personality, it's all, it's all um, I would say, very uh, tactical rather than strategic. And, and it's impersonal in some of the bigger organizations. So working together with small like-minded businesses um, actually, the, the positives significantly outweigh the negatives. You know, the opportunities are huge, the negatives are small. And actually, that once you start connecting people um, that, that, are, that are open to that idea, that there's a dynamic in team that just takes over because it, it feels has a family feel to it, which is why I was so I was I was surprised when I joined team that it was like that. But I got loads of support from members as much as I did from HQ and and also the service providers. And that was refreshing. Yeah. So let's think, and I totally agree with you. It was fairly, you know, I remember I drove down to, I always say a team meeting is in the middle of nowhere because I had to drive all this down through the night. And I walked in and I suddenly saw all these recruiters talking to one another and being friends where they were com- normally competing against one another. So I totally agree. And that is no... You know, there's no lie or, or sort of, you know, rose tinted glasses about that. That is the team network. But let's think about it. if I was a recruitment um, owner and I hadn't heard about actually the concept of splitting my fees with another competitor. Yeah. Right. What is the process? Because you've got the probably the most experience, um, you know, without out there about the practicalities of splitting fees. How would I go about, you know, give me ideas of how this would benefit and the practicality of actually making a split work? Yeah, I mean, we've developed some um uh, we developed uh, programs that um, where you can put jobs on to our team exchange and and members can a bit like a boolean they can search for they can put in their profile if if, if I was an IT specialist I want to see some of the all the IT roles that came on to the team exchange so I get an alert when a, a specific job came up with my my uh, set parameters in and I get a, an alert that uh, Joe in Manchester has got this IT uh, role. It's paying X, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And if I'm interested in that, I'd look at the details and then contact Joe. And and Joe and I would have a discussion and, you know, a bit like a qualification with a, with a, uh, a client and a candidate and just understand what they were looking for. And um, if there's a match, if, 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 if everything is right with that, in principle, we, we always say to our members, you split the fee. Whatever the fee is, you know, you talk about what the fee is. So uh, the salary, the fee, et cetera. And it is sort of the going rate that we split 50-50. Sometimes um, some of the team members are quite creative about how they do things. And and we have I have team members that don't have any resources in their team, but so they put every job they win because they're great at business development and use team as their outsourced resourcing team. And so jobs get filled 
uh, and and I, I, one of my our members s s s uh, pushes the CVs forward from other members as well as her own um, candidates that she sourced at the in the same pool, and she doesn't care who fills the role because she sees a bigger picture, and she's been able to scale her business significantly by using the variable cost of uh, team. So, um, so on that, I mean, that's that great example there, you know, because I've filled out my my quota of tenders in the past and it's looking at your capabilities in certain areas and your reach to be able to take on this client. But what's your reach if you don't if you have a hard to fill role and you're not able to fill that? Are you saying that members then effectively use this bank of 500 recruiters behind them to say we will get this filled? Yeah. I mean, we we have some we have some great and and smart people that have morphed their generalist businesses, which are regional, into mini RPOs, where they they've gone to they they've got great relationships with uh, hiring managers or HR within the organisation. They've proven their worth with regard to the relationship and also understanding the DNA of the client, so that they know what type of individuals that that, that organization wants and after a little while they've said we could look after everything you do and they you know the, the client's gone out really what do you know about finance because we got an fd role coming up soon and then they presented the team story and um we 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 got a great story recently of a, uh, a business in the northwest that they've won some uh, they won some business with two different clients 51 perm jobs they won in april uh, 26 in education and um, 25 in care. And they're in different parts of the country. So they, they brought those jobs to the team network. They're being filled now. They're, they're starting in June. And and that's in pure partnership. So that little six-person business suddenly... took on 51 perm jobs eight weeks ago, and they're filling it. And, and so that 50-50 split, does that 50% basically get – you know, for taking on that job and then facilitating that into the team network, they get 50% of that. Do they manage the client expectations uh, with the candidate or what? how, how, does, it, how yeah, does it split up? Actually, that uh, we members do things differently. Some, mm -hmm. some, what, what some, what some members will do who have the client relationship and it's a real specialist role, they will bring in, the the other the the team member they're partnering with to talk about the speciality of the role because they're experts at it you know and take on if you're a, a generalist in Manchester and you've got a specialist accountant role why not have the person that knows all about the qualifications understands the sort of experience that's needed and can talk uh, about the challenges in that uh, talent pool in, in that market mm -hmm. so it gives the client confidence and others. Others who understand the client really well and also understand the job but haven't got the resource to look after the sourcing process, they, they can brief the member well. And what, what happens is, the good thing about it, like all things, people buy from people, you build up a little network of people within team or within our organization who you know are like-minded with you and understand you, your clients, and, um, and lots of people – have a little clique of five or six they work together with well. Uh, we, we try and introduce them through the, the team exchange, and that does really well. There's a hundred mm -hmm. over 100 jobs on there at the moment with over a million pounds worth of fees to be won. Wow. Um, so um, it's, uh, it, it, yeah, it works. It, I've got a great question from Yvonne. Yes, I know. Was, I was just yeah, and, you know, yeah. this, is the, this is it. Like, is that trust element of how this happens? So we, you know, we have a, NDAs, we, contracts? We have a document that people uh, use to sign, and it's agreeing the principles of the role. It's like an NDA, but it, it could talk specifically about who you are, who's the job with, what candidates, are, and, and the agreement on the fees and, and not to. I, I would say, well, I was a regional director for a team a thousand years ago, and then when I was selling the business, I had to resign that, and I gave it to somebody better. Andy Dunn works, uh, is does that job now for team. Um, but when I was, I, I, I went with the previous MD, and we kicked somebody out because they they broke the rules. And yeah, so uh, give me some stories here. What makes what happens if somebody's not really you know come through in the I, right I way? I think I think they. Um, 
Uh, well, I think that role, I think that wasn't about splitting fees, actually. I think that was about poaching staff, that particular thing. But 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 in the last six months and since or seven months since I've been involved, we we haven't had to get involved in anything. You know, the, the, the signed agreement and the culture that we try and um, nurture polices things. Okay. And and you know, it, it nothing is nothing isn't you know, we can fix this. Now, yeah. does it also work, Simon, if you had a great just thinking from Yvonne's point of view as well, you know, yeah. she's um specialist up in Scotland. Yeah. Um and sometimes we have candidates, not right now, but are but actually could be doing it remotely, that wanted to work down in London. And it was a yeah. really, really good candidate that, you know, we've might placed a couple of times before and now for some other personal reason they're wanting to move. Could you, you know, is there a vehicle for maximising on getting half the fee of that candidate? Moving? Yeah, um, with the, on the team exchange, there's space for um, jobs and candidates as well. So people are pitching wonderful candidates to the market. Um, in, in truth, they don't get taken up so much. You know, people, we're, we're recruiters. We tend to react um, okay. to jobs rather than to candidates. Be much. But, uh, but if you have a great candidate, and and you can and and we and what we try and do at HQ and Trisha, our membership director, is probably the best at it. She will try and understand uh, the member in Scotland's requirement and and match that individual with probably their best match in London, so that they talk. So she, so she hasn't got to sort of spray all the, the 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 individual out there and have conversations with lots of people. We'll try and narrow the field for those individuals to go. I know someone who'd be really good for you in London who works in your space, who's got some great clients, be able to do something with that candidate where you can both benefit. So we we do get involved manually now and again to support people who who haven't built up the right direction. They haven't built the network yet. So they're 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 going on to team exchange, um, having some success, having some failures, but um uh, but building building that little network of people that works for them. Now, I know that you have, and it's a fantastic uh, annual event. I'm looking forward to, I think it's on fireworks night this uh, this year, is the team conference. Uh, we obviously didn't have it last year. Um, no. But that is one area where everybody gets together and those sort of networks and partnerships are starting to sort of form mm. there with probably a few gins. Um, but what, how else do um, the team members get to know one another so that the trust can be built? You know, how, how do you facilitate that within the membership? Yeah, that, that's a good question. Um, uh, and we're not meeting face to face at the moment. But but here we are on Crowdcast. You've seen me on about 100 Zooms in the last few months. Um, we with new members and we, we had a forum on uh, Monday. We had eight new members join us. Um, so I always have a forum with new members where we do the induction. So we introduce each other. We talk about we under, try and understand their business. What are they, where are they? Where are they in their in their cycle of? Have they just started? Are they on the growth uh, scale up? Or, or is it a lifestyle business? So we try and understand what their goals are, and then direct them in, in into some of the different things that we're doing. Because our goal is to help our members achieve their goals. Now, if you're a scale-up, you probably want to be with some people who are really ambitious, you know, hiring new people. You know, we got a session to, uh, on Friday, The you know, the importance of the billing manager. Uh, really good if you're a scale-up business and you've got, you know, layers in your team, you've got 20 or 30 people. If you're a solo recruiter, you've got three in your team. It's not for you. But so we try and we do an induction in the beginning, you know, in the first month. So we we get quite involved with the individuals. We network them with people that we want to, that would be a good buddy. Someone who's joined a year ago and has got the benefits of team, similar type of business. And then we buddy those people up and we get regional director or a, a specialist director. If they're an IT um, specialist, we put them into Tim's IT team or we've got a new construction group. We've got 25 construction recruiters now. So we've got them working together. And I um, think it's, it's every month or every two months that you all get together and right now yeah. it's online. We, yeah, uh, re regional and, um, uh, and, and specialist meetings are every three months. And every week we have L&D programs. We have thought leaders. We had Kevin Green on from uh, XREC CEO talking about um, uh, the next – 
this year and next year, how to get ready for the bounce. Really positive stuff from Kevin and especially for Q3 and 4, really yeah, powerful things. Definitely. And um, you know what? I'm just going to hit Paul's question off because this all sounds great and we definitely don't want this to be coming as a, I don't, you know, we, we talked no. about this. We don't want it as a sales pitch or anything like that. No. It's just, it's, it's a very unique way of working. And I want to just answer, Paul, there is no percentages of fees that no. team take. It's no. a membership that facilitates this all to happen. And that's why I love this mm-hmm. network. So I think that's a good one just to sort of be aware of it as well. I think you have a, there is a similar network for international business and they do take a bit of a percentage, don't they, Simon? Yeah, the MPA. Uh, we mm-hmm. partner with the MPA who, um, who are US founded, but pretty, uh, but, but global, um, uh, network of lots of really specialist international players in that. Um, And some of our members, we have an international division that actually quite a few of those people work with the MPA. If you're a member of team, you can work with the MPA and access that network, which is really good. Um, uh, But and they take a percentage. But we we we, don't. You don't in the UK. It's a membership in terms of having access to. We're we're here to facilitate your success. In any way we can. That's great. So part of this, I could be thinking as an odd, you know, I, I remember when I was getting introduced to this network as well, I was thinking, oh, I don't know if I really want all my recruiters to go and get to know all my competitors. You know, that must be something else that people sort of ask you about. It's like, you know, maybe I don't want them talking to my competitors. You know, what's your view on that? Well, uh, if if they're more attracted to your competitors, I, and I, I, you, I think the word competitor is the wrong word because <laughs> actually it, it's your collaborator it, it's it, it's your it's your fellow team member and that and that's how we sell it and and i mentioned we got 500 and there's thirty thousand out there you're they're, they're partners really they're not competitors and and actually if you're you're that disgruntled with the culture in your own business you're going to go anyway you know but um we we yeah, I, I think I got involved once when we, we kicked somebody out where they actively poached a member of staff from another member. And we said, no, that's not good enough. And, I, and that was uh, that was nine years ago. I can't remember. But other I think it's good that you actually took action for that. And I think you do. Because, you know, let's face yeah. it, anybody can do a split with somebody they know and they feel comfortable with, right? And you can yeah. work your way around it. Um, I think the part that helps with that trust is there's a bit of a police force there. And there is a sort yeah. of expectation that you join this members group because you have a shared sort of value to help one another trying to grow their own businesses as well, isn't it? Yeah. So I'm yeah. going to ask you some good questions here in terms of results. So what is the top fee? Do you know this uh, that has been split at the team network? I, I think I do. It, um, it was uh, we have I won't mention a surname, but we have a lovely lady called Mel who specializes in international business in sustainability. Mm-hmm. And she she had she she won a job in Singapore, yeah, and was based in London, um, and she uh, she knew uh, um, another of our members that had some good connections in Singapore in the sustainability senior sustainability space, and they worked together on a role that and they split forty k forty thousand pounds so twenty thousand each, um, and Mel knew that. That's awesome. she, she couldn't do that herself immediately, and she she's really open with who she works with. She only work, and she's really particular. She works retained, and uh, it was just wonderful to hear that news. Oh. I, mean, I, you know, it took me a while. You know, I I'm a I'm new to recruitment, really, just ten years. It took me a while to do a twenty grand fee, mm-hmm. let alone a, a forty, 40 grand, grand fee that I share with somebody else. I just yeah. fantastic. Really? Yeah, no, that's that's awesome. And and what av- what would you say for somebody sort of listening about this in terms of you know their average amount that they might sort of split of a good every, team member? Every every well, we the great thing about team is we do everything. We do we you know we're 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 looking after accountants through to zoos. You know, <laughs> um, so there's every jobs out there. There's local generalists. There's uh, specialist roles. So um, I, a couple of good examples I've had, especially in pandemic. One of our lovely members who was in sort of IT and engineering contract, mm-hmm. his market disappeared in last April. And um, and his clients just said, go away. We, we're not doing anything at the moment because our clients are not doing anything. We Don't talk to us. You know, don't keep ringing up because we haven't got any jobs. And he, he got pretty 
depressed for lots of reasons. And he sat on the couch, ate crisps and put on two stone. And, and it got to July and he thought, I can't do this anymore. This is dreadful. And his market hadn't picked up. He went on to Team Exchange. He started to look at a few of the jobs that were there and thought, I could, I could fill that job. Mm-hmm. He filled seven jobs in five weeks for our other members. <laughs> and, and I think more importantly, he got his mojo back. Yeah. When he got his mojo back, he started talking to his existing clients. And guess what happened? They started feeding him. Uh, he, they fed off that energy and he's, mm-hmm. he's just done wonderfully well. And he said they weren't great fees. They were little, you know, little jobs here and there, some contract roles. Mm-hmm. There's temp, contract and perm. It's not just perm. And um, so you get, you know, you can share a four grand fee or a 10 grand fee and it's little stuff, but little and often. Yeah. And, um, you know, we, I, think, I think I saw earlier that um, uh, Anthony was on the uh, – Anthony joined us um, a few years ago, and the last three years he split. He's he's built fifty thousand a year. He's a solo recruiter, and he he's built fifty thousand a year sharing with other people. Yeah. Um, as a solo recruiter, especially in pandemic, that's the backbone of a pipeline. And uh, he's a gr- he's built a network really quickly and a great advocate for collaboration so yes, he's, a, he's a great client of ours as well which is, oh, is he's he's, he's, well he's Anthony fine. well done you're um we, <laughs> we we recently ran a uh a, we did a webinar with some of our best members on sharing and he he joined that one and we had Claire and and Kelly and a couple of our real our best you know sharers of business giving tips and guidance to newer members on how to, how build, to do that how to do it how to build your network how to build that trust and, and focus in on the people that will give you and you could work to weather the best work together better so i mean you've given us lots of creative ideas and i think that's the thing is sometimes in our businesses we can just be sort of a little bit tunnel vision and we can just think oh we've got a role we've got to find a role we've got to fill it but there's so many other sort of ways that we can yeah. use recruiter skill sets so for businesses yeah. that are trying to um progress we always know that there might be a recruiter that is better at delivery rather than sales but yeah. you know, sales is sort of driven up or you've lost your best salesperson. So you can then dive into that team network and get sort of areas that they can still be billing and making money for mm. uh, the business. So I think that's just looking at things differently, which I've been delighted that you've been sharing with us today. So I, I normally get to the stage last few minutes of the session um, and I just want everyone to sort of just take something away from this. And I know we've got a very relevant ebook there as well as the agency split agreement template that is uh, largely based on the stuff that you do as well in team. But three things that you think that people can you know, put into action and take away from today if they want to sort of start to look at working with their competitors or collaborators, which I like how you put that. Yeah, um, I, I, everyone will know someone that they trust. You know, if, if, you, if you're not in a network or you're not in the REC or the recruitment network or or APSCO, you'll know people uh, that uh, or come across people that you worked with before. And, you know, throw the idea out there. Give the give it give, take a project. You know, some people who work perm have a conversion rate on contingency of 50 percent, you know. A little bit earlier than when you've sweated the job to bits and you can't find candidates or whatever. Have a chat with some people who you know work in that space and give them a chance because isn't it better to do a 60%, you know, com- uh, convict conversion rather than 50%, even if you've only got an additional 5% of revenue because the other 10% you've shared. It's just better. It's better for your clients. The clients are happier if you can fill more of their role. So, you know, you don't want to fail. It's, you know, if you've got 50%, contingency and you you're converting then you're you're wasting half your time yeah. and and working and collaborating with others can help you just and push your- you on in different standards a, lo- yeah. a lot of people have been running businesses for so many years that actually just understanding and getting an insight as to how other companies work can help push your business yeah. on as well can't I, it? I, I think the other thing is lots of people think about growth and adding people you know i did that you know, I started with four and I, I, met, I was lucky enough to end up with 37 in my team. Yeah. But sometimes that's ego. You know, you can scale your business now. If I was doing it differently, I'd be starting again. I think I'd, I think I'd outsource more, definitely, yeah. because that allows you to scale yeah. quicker. And, and you, can, you can do it without all the management headaches because yeah. you, you're working with 
professionals who know how to fill the job, some of the jobs you've got already. So yeah. I think working and collaborating, you can scale your business faster, certainly, which gives your clients better service. And I think I, I'd, I'd pinch some of those ideas for the RPO model because I think the, the localized RPO model underneath the radar of the big boys because you're dealing with SMEs primarily. No, I, I, you're, I, you're gonna, you're going to beat the competition. Yeah, definitely. That, and I think, competition. I think that's, you know, there's a real change to having a much closer relationship yeah. with all the business and your client and RPOs. There's an appetite for clients to uh, want to work with agencies in yeah. that basis. And the good news, David, um, thank you for posting that question is no, of course not. You do not need to put, there's actually no catches about this. Is there? Um, you don't have to put all your vacancies on the network. It's just the ones that you choose to. So yeah. there's nothing there that you sign up to or anything like else. This is truly, I think Anthony posted, it's like a family you just join that you're able to pick and choose yeah. and get to know other recruiters. And that's all the, sort of the, the, the culture of the team that just ask of that. And I can see that there's also been a bit of collaborative and this would make you proud, Simon. Um, I had some Mark Wilson has just posted their question going, we won 14 client um, private client tax positions in London in the southwest. Do you have any private client tax specialists? And then underneath it, we've got Kathy coming in going, that's so interesting. I've got I specialize in this space. We specialize in tax. So there's a collaboration there yeah. right Thanks. now. So I hope you guys and if you don't have one another's contact details, let me know and we'll be able to put you together in yeah. terms of uh, being able to, to hopefully help one another out there. Yeah. But look, that's what we're all about, isn't it? Um, and yeah. it's collaborating, it's working together and it's just, you know, looking after and scaling your businesses in different ways and you know i thought this was really relevant just before the bank holiday weekend yeah. that we got simon in because it is all about joining the dots in the recruitment space which is what we're trying to achieve simon thank you so much for giving us those sort of oversight because i think a lot of people just even from those questions that we were getting they do kind of think is this for real should i how does that happen and i just wanted you to come on and explain how working with your competitors can or collaborators can, can be done Good. Well, thank you for the opportunity. It's been lovely to to meet some of the Firefish Network. Yeah. Thank you. And I think Amy's done a um, nice wee posting there for you to um, be able to connect with yourself yeah. or on to team as well. Yeah. Um, thank you all for joining in. I've got a super duper crowd cast in a fortnight um, where we'll be talking to Audrey um, uh, from a marketing point of view. She used to work for LinkedIn and she's got yeah. such a good passion in terms of what makes marketing right for recruitment agencies and when yeah. is it right to actually hire uh, marketeers there as well. So uh, make sure you tune in for that. Um, in the meantime, there's only one last thing. Well, I think I've got one question that's popped up. Is there a late comer? Hang on, have we got time for this? I know this isn't a sales pitch, but what's the monthly cost? <laughs> there you go, that was the last. What is the monthly cost? Do you have that then, Simon? <laughs> oh, for team, yeah. um, it, it varies on how many people in your business, but it's about 70 pounds. There you go. Oh, you pay monthly, yeah. It's, yeah. it's not, it's an, you, you, you sign an annual contract, um, but uh, new members I always give a holiday to if they're – I don't want people to join team if it's not for them. Yeah. So, you know, I, I, we, we go through a big discussion at the beginning. I don't Good. want people to commit. Don't want anyone that's not satisfied. Excellent. Yeah. Well, listen, thank you so much. And to everybody listening, I'm, I'm on holiday tomorrow. <laughs> I've been crawling to the bank holiday. Um, I hope you all get a break as well um, because I know that everybody has been working so hard. Enjoy the May bank holiday. I will see you back in a couple of weeks. Simon, as always, love team, love you guys. Well thank done you. in doing what you do. And thank you for joining us. Bye, thank everyone. You. Bye, everyone. Thank you.